Hey, Overcomers, I am Dara Marie. I'm your favorite mindset teacher. And this is Be An Overcomer, where you are inspired and empowered to walk by faith and use the gift of imagination to create the life you desire. So Overcomers, today's message is how to improve your mindset. Everything starts with you. Everything begins with you. No matter what it is that you desire or whatever it is that you want to manifest in life, it begins with your thoughts because your thoughts and words and your feelings, that's creating your reality. So today I want to read to you from The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard, and I'm reading from chapter four, which is on desire. The changes which take place in your life as a result of your changed concept of yourself, always appear to the unenlightened to be the result, not of a change of your consciousness, but of chance, outer cause, or coincidence. However, the only fate governing your life is the fate determined by your own concepts, your own assumptions, for an assumption, though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. The ideal you seek and hope to attain will not manifest itself, will not be realized by you until you have imagined that you are already that ideal. There is no escape for you except by a radical psychological transformation of yourself, except by your assumption of the feeling of your wish fulfilled. Therefore, Make results or accomplishments the crucial test of your ability to use your imagination. Everything depends on your attitude towards yourself. That which you will not affirm as true of yourself can never be realized by you. For that attitude alone is the necessary condition by which you realize your goal. And I want to read that section again. I even underlined it and I started Everything depends on your attitude towards yourself. That which you will not affirm as true of yourself can never be realized by you. For that attitude alone is the necessary condition by which you realize your goal. All transformation is based upon suggestion. And this can work only where you lay yourself completely open to an influence. Okay. And then I'm going to continue on a little further. And it says... You must imagine that you are already experiencing what you desire. That is, you must assume the feeling of the fulfillment of your desire until you are possessed by it and this feeling crowds all other ideas out of your consciousness. Like, you have to be so consumed by that goal, by that vision, by that dream. That's what he's saying in terms of being possessed. It's like, a lot of times, and I don't know why earlier today, I love when God like gives me a download. And a lot of times when people see someone who has like attained a certain level of success or wealth, it appears as if they are an overnight success. But a lot of times it's not, that's not the case. It has been years. A lot of times it, it is years in the making before like that idea, for example, an inventor or someone who writes a book, before that book like becomes a bestseller, there are a lot of times that there have been years of them writing, years of them you know, working on that particular book, or maybe they've written several books before that one book becomes a bestseller. So to the, um, to the natural eye or to the person that's watching, it looks like, oh yeah, that just happened overnight, or it was just luck, or they just have it like that. But no, a lot of times it's years in the making, and a lot of times it is a lot of discipline and focus on that goal. Now, you remember a couple of videos back, I don't know if it was the video I just did or a couple of videos back, I mentioned to you how when I was younger, I had to read every day, and I was reading the New York Times. So much so, I still remember their slogan, all the news that's fit to print. I do not still read the New York Times. But when I was younger, my dad made me read the New York Times because at the time, I was having trouble with spelling. Ironically now, with all of that, years fast forward, I'm, I love spelling. I love reading, especially books on the mind, especially about like personal development and mindset and 
elevating your life and shifting your life. I can read those kind of books all day, okay? So I was thinking how, and I was just saying to you how a lot of times people see something and they think, oh, it was an overnight success, not knowing that it was years in the making. And a lot of times you can trace certain things back. And discipline is so necessary. It's so necessary for you to see the manifestation of the things that you're desiring, for your goals, for your dreams. It's so important that you discipline your mind to focus on that thing that you desire and discipline your thoughts so that you can steer your life in that direction. And another thing, when I looked back in that season where I had to like read every day, I was reading the New York Times and the words I didn't understand or wasn't able to pronounce, I had to actually use the Webster's Dictionary. My dad was like, okay, look up this word. And he sat with me and like pronounced this word. And if there was words I didn't understand, he would help me. So in that season, as a kid, I was like, this is such a waste of time. I was like, why am I doing this? I couldn't understand. Fast forward years later, when I got to seventh grade, I'll never forget my English teacher, who's like one of my favorite, when I look back over the teachers I had, she was one of my favorite teachers. And she just brought English to life and books to life and reading. And I just remember in her class, loving to write essays and, and reading. And I just excelled so much that she told me, she said, you know what? Next year, when you get to eighth grade, because I was in the Regents track, I'm going to recommend that you go to advanced English. I was like, fine. And she also told me, she said, we also have a literary magazine. And she was the teacher that was, I guess, um, the advisor for the literary magazine. She invited me to be a part of it. I was the only seventh grader. Everyone else was eighth grade and up. And I look back at that season, like that season when I was in third grade, it was preparing me for eventually getting into like this advanced class, getting into the literary magazine. I ended up writing several articles and poems for the magazine. And then fast forward again, when I had to write my master's thesis. And by that time, like with college of writing papers, I remember there were other students in the class and they were like stressed out. They're like, oh my God, we gotta do a thesis. And in my mind, I was like, writing? Boom, I've been doing this. Reading, I've been doing this. But it was years of training, years of preparation and discipline and focus in that area. So if there is a goal, something that you want, you have to discipline yourself in that area. And trust me, I understand it's not easy. There's areas of my life where I'm like, okay, very disciplined with. And then there's other areas where it's like, okay, I need to improve on this. I need to work, you know, on this, work at it. But I do believe I will get there because it's like, it's in my mind to do it. And if I would just focus on it and discipline myself and take it day by day, I will get there. So getting back to what he's saying here, your desire, okay? Basically your desire, that feeling, that vision you have to discipline your mind to focus on that thing, okay? You have to discipline your mind, okay? That's how you improve your mindset. You improve your mindset by focusing on the things that you want to create in your life because only you can change your life, only you. It's no one on the outside. You know, it's people could come along and I truly believe God could bring people along to help you on this journey called life. But ultimately, it's your decision in what you want for your life. It's your decision to decide what you want and really be very focused. Get laser focused on that thing that you want, that vision, that goal, and just zero in on it. Okay? So I hope that helps. I hope that makes sense. I hope it helps you because a lot of times, like, we have these goals and we have these desires, but we're not knowing how to get there, how to get from point A to point B. Part of it is discipline. Another part is going in your mind. As you know, I always talk to you about affirming, using your affirmations, visualize. That's where your imagination comes in. Script it out. If you have to write it out, write it out because that will help you. Your subconscious mind, it's always listening. 
It's ready to take you at your word. It's ready to take your order. Just like when you're in a restaurant and you place your order, you decide, you look at the menu, you're reading the menu, you're like, okay, I think I'm gonna have this and I'm gonna have that. And then next thing you know, the waitress or the waiter, they come along, you place your order with them and then you wait. You don't go back to the kitchen and say, okay, where is it? How come it hasn't shown up yet? You just wait patiently for it. And that's what we have to do. We have to wait patiently for that thing to come to us, for that manifestation to unfold. And in a way that we don't know how, God will bring it to us, but we have to be patient, okay? We don't control how or why something shows up. We just have to wait patiently for it. So overcomers, I have a few keys um, that I wanna leave with you, okay? The first one is focus on the new story. A lot of times we focus on what's undesirable, what's not working in our lives. And this is where you have to shift your focus. You have to think from the state. So for example, what would it be like if you had that thing? If you had that thing that you desired, what would it be like? What does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? If it's a business, what are your clients? Um, if you're going to write a book, if you're going to go back to school, whatever it is, if it's a relationship, I want to share this quick story. A friend of mine, she's in a great, like really happy, fulfilled relationship right now, but she told me how she actually visualized in her mind the man that she wanted and she actually had a picture of him on the refrigerator, on her refrigerator, okay? And he basically like the same build, the height, everything. The th like the picture that she had on her refrigerator, <laughs> the picture that she has, I'm sorry, I got to get some water. The picture that she has on her refrigerator is the man that she has in her life. So just so you know how powerful your mind is, your mind is very powerful. The things that you focus on the most you will bring about. You will see it expressed in your world. I'm here to tell you that's how it works. But often, and if you look at the world, they want to keep you busy with like nonsense and busy with stuff that doesn't matter. Like this, I don't even want to get into it, but there's stuff right now that's like trending online. And I'm like, seriously, like, like it's focus on your life. Focus on your own life. Focus on the dream, focus on the goal, focus on the vision, focus on the thing that the Lord has given you because this is the one life you've been given. You're here to live an amazing life and you're gonna hear me say this like every message, like you're here to live an amazing life and be great and have the things that you desire. So you have to focus on what you want and that's basically the first key is focusing on what you want Focus on the new story. Stop rehashing the old story. Stop focusing on things that are not working in your life. Focus on the things that are working in your life. The next key, the 3D is malleable. Everything is subject to change. And it changes based off, off your words, your thoughts, your feelings. The moment you shift your thoughts, things begin to shift. The moment you shift your thoughts, things, I want to say in the spiritual realm, start to go to work. That's why the word says, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. The only thing is that we don't control when these things show up, but we have the power to decree over our lives what we want. So the moment you decree a thing, it will shift. The next key I want to leave with you, which is the third key. Just believe. Your job is to just believe. The Bible even says all things are possible to those that believe. It's your belief. In the Bible, the woman that was dealing with the issue, right? It talks about the issue of blood for like how many years? I want to say 12 years or so. The Lord, well, she felt, she's like, you know what? I just need to get up to Jesus. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. It was her faith. And then Jesus even said, your faith has made you well. Your faith activates things in the spiritual realm. I'm telling you, I'm not telling you just to tell you, I'm telling you what I know, okay? 
Your faith activates things in the spiritual realm. I shared with you when I was going through that season, it was a crazy season. One day I believe, I don't know if God's going to allow me to write the full story, full testimony, you know, but when I think back how that season was and the peace that's on it, I literally prayed it into existence. I faithed it into existence. I spoke it into existence. I believed it into existence. Because in the natural, see, there are, we're in a world that, which I don't want to get too deep on it, but we're in a world that has systems, right? And once you tap into your God side, you tap into your faith. As I told you, faith is a higher dimension. It overrides all of this, this dimension, and it overrides it. Faith causes miracles, signs, and wonders to show up in your life. And in the natural, in that season, like I was getting so frustrated because I was like, first of all, there's no way I want to have to keep coming back to this place that claims to help you, but they really are not about helping you. Okay? And I'm having to go back and forth with these different like court dates and nonsense. And I was like, Lord, I remember one day I had left there and, I, and my mom had went with me and I just looked at her and I said, I don't know what I'm going to have to do, but I don't want to come back here. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I really don't want to come back here. And at that moment, I knew I was going to have to handle this situation spiritually. And I'll never forget my Bible teacher said to me, when things are hectic in the natural, that's when you go spiritual. And when I say spiritual, I prayed, I faithed it, I believed for the best, okay? And this is not like, when you step into this power, this power, this God-given power, this power where you can decree things over your life and you start to see things shift and change, you're using it for your highest good and for the highest good of others, okay? I'm saying this again. You are not to wish bad on somebody. You're not to speak bad over anybody else. Because remember, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Our words, it says in the Bible, by your words, you're justified. And by your words, you're condemned. Never speak ill will over somebody else. Because the very thing that you speak over somebody else is going to come back to you. And it's going to come back to you multiplied. So I just need to say that. I don't know who that's for. So always make sure when you are decreeing and speaking and faithing things into existence, you're doing it for your highest good and for the highest good of others. Okay? So I just had to say that. So anyway, in that season, by walking by faith and believing and trusting God that this the situation would change, it did. And it changed. And it's so peaceful and it's so harmonious. Okay. And, um, I just needed to share that. Another key, as I was saying, everything, it begins with you. That's the next key. Everything begins with you and you need to work on your self-concept. Self-concept is everything. The best way and the quickest way to bring in your manifestations is to work on yourself. Speak things that you want to see come to pass. That's how you bring these things into existence. So I hope this blessed you today. Um, I feel like this video, once again, <laughs> my videos are getting longer and longer. So I hope this blessed you today. Remember, this is how to change your mindset. This is how to improve your mindset. Keys, certain keys. Focus on the new story. Focus on what you're creating, Okay. Understand the 3D is malleable, meaning it is subject to change. This 3D, malleable, it bends, it shapes to your words, to your thoughts. And everything begins with you. And that's a good thing because you can decree whatever you want over your life. Decree the highest, the grandest, the best things over your life and watch it come to pass. So Overcomers, I love you all so much. Thank you so much for being here. And if you like this message, please share it. Please comment. Get others to join our community. We are growing and I love it, okay? I'm so thankful that we keep growing and growing. So overcomers, have an awesome day. Always be an overcomer.